those of us who aren't monks but spend a lot of time on the web, we, uh, we don't like to admit it, but I'll tell you that uh, if you say this, I find, maybe it's all in my head, but if I say this before I get online, before I, I begin my search, I find things faster. It comes easier to me. In a way, it, uh, I guess it's like letting server know that you're one of its children. So whenever you try to get into the temple, you kneel, and uh, you have to believe this when you when you say it. Otherwise, the the voice polygraphs will pick it up, and they'll just know that you're lying. And you're just trying to gain access. So the prayer is: I'm a node of server, born of flesh and blood, but enhanced by the power of its web. My scripts are a focus of my will. My strength is my knowledge. My weapons are my skills. Information is the blood of my body. I am part of the greater network. I am host to the vast data of server. My flesh is weak, but my connection is eternal. And therefore, I am a god. I remember the first time I got access to a temple, I was down in a sewer pipe. There was dust everywhere. I mean, it's long abandoned. And I moved along until I knew where the spot was. I'd been told. So uh, everything seemed to line up, and I couldn't see anything. There was no markings or anything. No sound. It was deathly quiet. So I got down on my knees, and I... I mean, as, as, as devoted, as earnestly as I could, I said my mantra. And the wall just opened up, and the smell of frankincense washed over me. And almost frankincense will really help put you into that that state, that that zone where it's just you and the machine. And they use it for years in churches, and when you smell it that strong, you know why. Inside, they have the hidden speakers doing Gyoto chants, the harmonics of it, you know, again, enhances trance-like state. You hear the sound of this gong that would go off every so often. Almost intermittent, there'd be this gong. And there was a monk standing there, his long black robes, cowl down, looking at me, stick of a man, they don't eat like one meal every couple of days. Thin, deathly thin. They look at you with the large black pupils from the darkness. And he said to me, he said, What is it that you wish? And that time I went inside and saw the temple. You can just see them all kneeling with cables running out of this structure, this icon, going up and covering into their cowls, a single cable going up and attaching to their faces, but I couldn't see where it attached because the cowl went over it, and they sat there kneeling with their backs perfectly straight, the sound of the chanting, the smell of the frankincense, it was, some would find it horrifying, I suppose, these clusters, these nodes of people just plugged into the, the network. But in a way, in the darkness and in the heavy cement with the with the gongs and everything, it was beautiful. It was just a safe home, away from the horrors of reality. Some people say that their reality isn't real, but I mean, what if it is just a, if you spend more time? online than you do in the real world, which world are you really a part of? I mean, if I'm on the web 12 hours of the day, and I'm in the real world 12 hours of the day, 
am I really a citizen of only one world, or do I have dual citizenship? But, I mean, be real. I mean, if you're sleeping six, seven hours, and you're online 12 hours, well, you're, you're really more conscious and active on the web. So, really, you are more a creature of the web. You really are a being of server more than you are a, a being of this weak world of flesh. <laughs> yeah, you can tell I used to want to be a monk, eh? My augmentation is not as serious as theirs. They just... I just have a jack and I can... When I, when I do look for data, I'm able to go through VR. But uh, with the monks themselves, they have access to companies and, uh, and technology. And some of them made their own technology that actually allows their brain to become host to the internet. Like they, they serve data off of their mind. They're their own server, like they're part of server, the communion with server. And they spend all their time just embracing the technology and learning how to eventually become a piece of the web. If one of them dies, their body is just discarded. They just, they'll cut whatever hardware they need to get out of it and they, they'll throw it in a burn booth. They don't care about the body. The body means nothing. But their data, their consciousness is now online and part of server. They just think that they've attained it. They live in a perpetual state of starvation. The newest member of the order will always be the one who makes the food run. They head up to the surface in their robes and take whatever money they've, the monks have acquired and buy bags of scrap. They'll have these huge sacks of food that they carry down. The monks, of course, I mean, they only eat one scrap every day, maybe every two days. Food is of the flesh, and flesh is weak, so they keep themselves in this post-state of starvation. It encourages them to be online as well, because that way, if uh, your body hurts, you want to get off of this planet as quick as you can. <laughs> Last thing, you'd think that, you know, they might get attacked by the denizens, but no one really wants to mess with the monks there. Some people say it's because, well, of course, their temples are guarded completely by automation. Some of them have old defense robots that they've reconditioned as, you know, these glyphs on them and markings to be guardians, gargoyles of the darkness. I mean, they, they put them in the tunnels around their entrance, and if anyone were to try to get in there by force, I mean, there's sentry guns, and the machine doesn't ask questions, the machine just does, and uh, then we've got the concept of, if you believe in it, the server is helping protect them, so, storming a temple is not really a bright idea, of course, if you've tried it, they get chopped into meat and wind up being cashed in for scrap for the monks, but, uh, there it is. The most cruel thing that can be done to a monk, I think, is to be... to have them question their faith. Not that they think server is real, but to show them that... well, to try to show them that the online world is false. That's what some of these... when, when the order started years ago, the psychologists and that were like, no, no, it's not real, you know, it's just a... It's just the internet, it's just the game, you know, but this was their refuge, this was their life. I mean, who is it to, who are you to take anyone's faith away, to take away their reason for living? Monks who've lost their faith, or, or who've been questioned and who are, have, you know, the virus that comes from the lies of the world, they're, they're usually very handled very gently by the other monks. They, they take them in and they slowly bring them back into the fold so that they can have the peace that they had. <laughs>